Greetings everyone and welcome to another installment in the iWish series, a series in which I buy things off Wish, see if they're any good, most of the time they're crap. However, this item's not off Wish, so it's not an iWish episode, but this item can be found on Wish. And Joom, and all those other cheapy, dodgy websites, even eBay too. There is a multitude of listings for this item, some say that it has a 6.7 inch display, some say that it has a 6.1 inch display, some say that it's got a deck core, some say that it's got a 4800 milliamp hour battery, etc, etc. But the device featured here is clearly ripping off the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. If you're looking for an actual Mate 30 review, you might want to check somewhere else, because we're having a look at the absolute cheapest, shittiest one that I've found. Well, that I stumbled across anyways. As most of you should know, I frequent cash converters quite a lot. There was a white box in the phone cabinet. And I went, no, please just no, don't, no. And I got a good look at it. And sure enough, yep, they've put Mate 33 Pro, but it's actually the Mate 39 Pro. And it's 8 gig plus 128 gigs of storage. The color is blue. According to the blue dot, it's blue. You got VT there, probably violet green, gun, and blick. It's Australian, so that's great. They had $59 on this, which I thought wasn't too bad, and the reason why I bought this, A, was to do a video on it, and B, because I saved someone the hassles. If they walked in and seen this for $59, looked at it, seen, hey, it looks like a decent device, bought it, and then found it it was a piece of shit, returned it, the store would get a whole heap of shit for it, and, well, you know, I'm just saving the hassles. Technically, cash converters shouldn't have bought it in the first place. They probably would have given them 10 or 20 bucks for the item anyways. But I've saved some on the hassles. So I've bought it instead to torture myself. That's great. Now, of course, going around these cheapo welcome devices, we expect the white plain box with absolutely nothing on it. Just nothing. And yeah, Mate 39, all that good stuff. So what did I get inside of the box? We got the Russian charger, of course. The thing that weighs absolutely actually this is probably the lightest one i've ever felt hang on okay we're in um yep so you just got little prongs like so um if you trust your house with one of these plugged in hey that's absolutely fine but for me personally i wouldn't so, these bundle chargers that come with these generic-ass phones, I would not use in a million years, because it's just, it's just, just, no. Please don't. And people go, well, but you don't know about electronics, you, you, blah, blah. Okay, well, go ahead, plug this in, but if it catches fire and burns your whole house down, don't blame me. Now I've got a carcass to get rid of. We've got a USB Type-C cable, which is honestly quite surprising, because most of them are usually just micro-USB, but this one is Type-C, so that is good. And then we have the device itself. Just like so. There's a user manual here, which is pretty much, how do you use the phone? In this case, the weight, diameter, battery, network, and all that sort of stuff is um, actually not listed there, but hey, why not? That's fine. All right. Now, you're also going to notice something. It has 39 bucks on it. That's because I bought two of them. They had two of them there. The same customer sold two Welkin devices to them, one that they priced at 39 and one that they priced at 59 Well, this was in the wrong box. So the other one I've got, we'll do a review another day. So this one is the Mate 39 Pro thing. But anyways, let's have a look around it and I'll grab the case off it just for the time being. Hey, free cases, man. Now I have switched this device on to make sure that it does work. It does seem to completely function. And I have had a quick look at just the user interface and stuff, but we'll probably go through it once we switch it on. Uh, there's no screen protector at all on this. So fingerprints and all that are gonna get everywhere. Looking at the top of the device, we can see our little notch. He's only a little one, but he's got two blue circles there to look like the Mate 30's little tiny notch that it has. But those blue circles probably just have a proximity sensor under it, and that's about it. And the bezels on this device aren't actually too bad for a cheapy welcome device. They're not half bad, to be fairly honest. Nothing like the Mate 30's, of course, and there's no curved display, but it still looks half decent. We'll also have a look at the LCD when we power it on, because I have to sort of mention something about the uh, notch area. It's just something a little bit strange going on with that. At the top, we have our SIM tray just there, which is a little bit of a different color to the rest of the frame. Some of the listings for this say that it's got a unibody, but no, it's just completely plastic and we can check that. On the side, we have our volume rockers as well as a power button, which also has a little bit of a raised lip on it that has a red line painted on it. Well, I guess that's attention to detail considering this is on the real Huawei Mate 30 Pro anyways. 
coming to the bottom, we have the speaker grills. Type-C USB port, as well as a hole for the microphone. And nope, no headphone jack. Sorry. And the other side is completely plain. And of course, on the back, the lovely cash converter sticker. I don't think there's anything under here. But we can check. Nah. Nothing. Alright, moving on to the back of the device. I gotta say, this colour is quite nice. All that shimmery, shiny goodness there makes it look premium. I mean, that's what I mean. If someone walked into Cashing Road and seen this, and they held it like that, it feels premium. I gotta say, it feels premium, feels quite solid, feels quite sturdy. But, is the back glass, or is it plastic? Glass. The back is glass. That's actually quite good. Uh, we have our quad camera set. Sorry, our quad camera setup at the top here, as well as our dual tone flash just over here. Also, there's just just hole that's just covered by some white paper underneath there, I assume. So once we tear it down, we'll get to see what that is. If it's a secondary flash, that'd be cool. Over the cameras is plastic around the sides of the device. It appears to just all be plastic, unfortunately. So glass in the back, plastic body, not half bad for the price anyways. And our quad camera setup, just give you a moment to have a look at that wonderful, gorgeous design there. You can see the real camera as opposed to the three dud ones. Once we tear this down, we'll get a better look at the LED flash as well as all the dud cameras and all that sort of good stuff. Also, I completely forgot to mention, while this appears to be an actual camera bump, it is not. It's just all completely flat. Coming back to the display, it's about a 6.2 inch display, and of course, it has glass on it as well. So now the moment of truth. Power on time. Actually, no, hang on, we've got to put a SIM card in it. This will probably claim to have 5G or 6G or 20G or whatever we're up to now. Populating the SIM tray with an SD card and a nano SIM. We can pop this back in somehow. As I said, sorry about all the fingerprints and stuff. This is a used device and someone was actually using it, so there's all scratches and all that sort of stuff. But hopefully, when we switch it on, we won't see much of that. All right, here goes. It's a welcome device. Of course it is. It's never any different. Oh, we've had a Beyond one before. I don't know if they should change it. It's going to play at my funeral, I swear to God. Okay, and we've booted up, and uh, yeah, 5G. As most of you should know, though, Australia basically does not have 5G. There's like 2% of Australia that has 5G. So, where I am, does not have 5G. So, uh, welcome device. You're telling fibs. What are you doing? Oh, The edge lighting. That's quite interesting. I've also completely forgotten that someone's data is still on here. So I'm going to perform a factory reset. We're going to start again. Oh, does the wallpaper change every single time? It does. That's amazing. All right, I'm going to do a factory reset and we'll start again. I reassembled the uh, charger, just in case. You can have a look at it now. See, the Russian one, the generic one. I should burn this, so I never have to look at it again. But that's dangerous. Alright, five minutes later, it is booted back up, and we are ready to go. There was no setup, no nothing. Just this. That's it. And we have 5G, full strength, as before. As you can tell, the device has a skin on it to look like Huawei's operating system, the EMUI with all the icons and stuff pretty much looking like it. Why is TikTok installed by default? That should just get uninstalled. Let's get rid of that so I don't have to deal with that. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you later. Never want to see you again. Thank you. All right. Nothing wrong with TikTok. Just don't like it. Um, okay. Now, before I jump into anything, I want to point out the display, which actually is not half bad. It is pretty clear. The colors on the display are very vibrant, very, very nice. But there's just one small itty bitty problem with the notch area. Most devices with a notch have the cutout in the screen for the notch. And there's actually no display underneath it. But this one appears to have the LCD going straight underneath the notch, if that makes sense. Like, it possibly looks like it's just a cutout for the camera in the LCD instead of a notch, if that makes sense. Because... Um, Basically, it recognizes touch just on the camera, just there. Unless the digitizer itself is tracking movements just there. I'm not too sure, but it's just something I thought I'd point out. But no, display-wise, it looks very good. Let's just 
quickly have a look at the pre-installed apps. We don't really care for much. Um, we have browser on here, which is just the generic browser. Yep, that's usual. Um, all the stuff on here is pretty usual. We really don't have to go through much of it, to be fairly honest. I'll actually scroll down just so you can have a better look at all this, like so. And in the settings menu, it does clearly look like Huawei's EMUI. Um, so in Connect, we have Wi-Fi, SIM cards, data usage, and more. Let's go to cellular networks and see if we can pick up... Well, let's see if it just picks up anything else. And it looks like that this is just a 3G device, which is no surprise. No surprise at all. And of course, there's no NFC or anything like that. It is all just bare bones. In device connection, there is just Bluetooth and printing. That's it. Do we really need to test Bluetooth? Not really. Apps and notifications. Let's have a quick squiz and see all of the apps on here. If there's anything dodgy, feel free to let me know down in the comments below because I'm just having a quick sort of scroll through here and, you know, if I see anything, I'll let you know. But obviously at the moment, it's all looking... Uh, there's a couple here. A couple here that are red flags. For me, anyways. Fingerprint is chip sailing. <laughs> Okay, that's that's fair. All right, fuck plugin. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Come on, Google keychain. That's keychain. Apple keychain. No, okay. Nope, never mind. Uh, modify IMEI. That's illegal. Okay, Phoenix. That is a virus, I believe. Why is there four different phone applications on here? Okay, sure, why not? No worries, man. Shining light. I wonder what that does. Uh, system UI is Lollipop. Cool. We got Lollipop on this thing. All right. Um, that's about it. So there's a couple there that sort of, you know, stand out a little bit. But we'll run a virus test if we can. And we'll see what it comes up with. Uh, in power saving mode, battery usage. What has been using the battery? I don't know. You tell me, mate. Approximately two hours left, 93%. Considering this does claim to have a 4800 milliamp hour battery in most listings that I've seen anyways. Uh, that probably isn't the case, but hey, you never know. Uh, wallpaper, we can pick wallpaper. So these are all the ones that we've seen before, and I believe these are ripped directly off the Mate 30, or Mate 30 Pro, whatever. They do all look nice. I'll uh, just keep the default one, that's perfectly fine. Lock random wallpaper. Oh, okay, so it's on now, is it? Oh yeah, okay, it is on. All right, cool. Uh, brightness level, I don't think we need to change that. Always on display. Uh, we can have an always on display. Sure, why not? But we can change the layout to have... Oh, It's not cancel. It's cancel. First time I've seen that. Alright, cool. Well, um, I guess we'll uh, apply that and not cancel it. About always on display. The latest version is already installed. Groovy. Shining light. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's the, the edge lighting. Okay. Hang on, I'm just going to quickly test that. I'll just do core quality now, actually. But we'll see if it's going to glow green. There we go. <laughs> so silly. Testing. Oh, it sounds terrible. Whew. Safe to say that the quality of calls is not the best, considering it's only 3G, there's nothing special going on, but at least it uh, receives calls and makes calls. Well, I haven't tested making calls. Okay, uh, G-Sensor Calibrate, that's the... Ooh, look at that. This is a game in itself. Help, please keep device horizontally and don't move. Alright, I won't move then. The phone's performing a robbery on itself. Okay, um, cool. So far, this phone is great. <laughs> um, do we really need to see ringtones, honestly? Phone ringtone, it's probably just all the generic ones and stuff. Yeah, let's just play a random one. Okay, I regret that. Uh, the speaker sounds pretty crap. Cool. But when we get to the speaker test, we'll see if it sounds any better. Probably not. Uh, notifications. Interruptions. Oh, you can... Okay, cool. Sound enhancement. All the usual stuff here. But with Bluetooth mode, because it doesn't have the headphone jack on it. Uh, in storage, what do we have in phone storage? We've got 128 gig, which is set on the box. Anyone want to guess? 16, maybe? 8? 8 or 16, if it's over 16 gigabytes of internal storage, I will use this phone for a day. I'll swear to that. Uh, security and privacy, lock screen and iris. 
a little bit of a lag there. Screen lock, we can change it to multiple ones, but we'll come back to this. Um, unknown sources will allow that just for now. Um, data production, <laughs> yeah, yep, okay. I'm sure there'll be viruses on here somewhere. Users and accounts, all that stuff. High touch, did you see that? High touch, just making it like a Huawei there. Accessibility, smart awakening, and edge screen. Hey, let's let's enable the edge screen. Hey, there it is. The apps edge, the people edge, the internet edge, quick tools, Yahoo. <laughs> okay, okay, so the LED is there, so not there. So I wonder what that is. Inaccessibility, nothing really to speak about in here. So we'll come straight to about phone and we'll have a look at some of the wonderful things that it's got in here. So this is the Mate 39, the build number is L700 LYXK3 Welcome Q 540 by 1200 128A16NYLV11. So with that, that means the display is 540 by 1200 and it's got 120 gig and 16 gigs or 128 megs and 16 gigs of storage. That would make sense. I don't know. We'll have to check. Uh, Android version is 10. The security patch level is 2017. So that's quite a while back. Kernel version, baseband version, all that sort of stuff. If we come into status, we can see all the IMEI info and all that sort of stuff. The serial number is 0123456789 ABCDEF as usual. And the IMEI info is all just there. Don't know what that comes up with. Anyone wants to check, feel free. There's someone in the comments that always looks up the IMEIs for me and tells me what phone they're associated with. So thank you to that person. Not too sure who you are, but thank you. Um, all right, so nothing really much going on here. Let's go ahead and enable developer options because why not? Cool, we're a developer. Um, oh, sorry, Easter egg. Completely forgot about the, ah, oh, okay, Android 10 Easter egg. But we've seen Lollipop. I forgot what I've got to do here. Someone did tell me. Um, but I can't remember what you're supposed to do. That'll do. That's fine. In developer options, we'll have a quick squeeze through here and see if there's anything that we need to set. I'll do the window animations as usual. I know that doesn't improve performance or anything like that. It just makes it... Oh, actually, everything's down to, like, bare minimum. Okay, that's, that's reasonable then. Uh, yeah, look, I know turning off that doesn't improve performance per se, but it simulates that the phone is slightly faster. Use awesome player instead of new player for most media playback. Okay, never seen that before. Don't keep activities. Destroy every activity as soon as the user leaves it. Holy shit. They're pretty serious with this one. And I've just realized that there's no system update. Okay, sure. Well, what I'm going to do is connect to Wi-Fi. We'll do fingerprint, face unlock, all that stuff. And then we'll go through the apps and do a couple of tests. I renamed my Wi-Fi and I couldn't think of a good name. Anyone want to suggest anything? Please feel free. All right, Wi-Fi is connected, so now we need to come into security and privacy and set a face unlock or fingerprint because we want to have this phone as secure as possible and make sure no one can get into it. So let's go ahead and do the fingerprint. I think it was on the main screen, wasn't it? Oh, there it is. Found it. Oh, I didn't find it. Okay, so I'm trying to get fingerprint up and going. But I just want to show all the permissions that it uses. Just everything. Absolutely everything. There's absolutely no settings for it. Unless it's in face lock. Look at your phone to unlock it. Keep these things in mind. Face unlock is less secure than a patent pin or password. Yep. Someone who looks similar to you could unlock your phone. Mm -hmm. Yep. The data used to identify your face is kept private on the phone. I call bullshit on that one. Uh, find an indoor spot. Not too bright or not too dim. Hold the phone eye level. Okay, done. All right, let's go. The unlock selection comes up with choose a pin or pattern. That's it. So we'll choose a pin. Can't even get one, two, three, four right. All right, you're all done. Great. Let's have a look and see what it does. Excuse me while I unlock my device. <laughs> it said, sorry, don't recognize you. <laughs> okay. Face unlock works. Not a problem, because it just takes a photo of you and then goes, hey, is that the person? Yep, that's the one. I'm going to try fingerprint again. Well, thing. Fingerprint. Ah, there it is there. Unfortunately, settings have stopped working. Uh, okay, that's perfectly fine. Well, it looks like we won't be um, testing the fingerprint unlock, and as you all know, the fingerprint is fake. It's just the on-screen one. 
it's not under the display because this is an LCD and not an OLED panel. So it's just software. You press it, any part of skin touches it, it'll unlock. I've made jokes about it before. So that's all good. We don't have Chrome on here. We have Twitter. We have a couple of things installed. Let's just open up uh, the browser again, see if it comes up with anything. There's Google. I'm happy with that. All right, so I'm opening up the Mate 30 Pro 5G specifications on Huawei's actual website. That looks nice, except the picture is not in the right place. Um, but yeah, this is what device you think you're getting, but instead you're getting uh, this. Orange, forest, g cosmic put, and space. Oh, there we go. Takes a little while. So I guess... Uh, Internet browsing may be a little bit slow on this. That's okay. Look, it works. Let's have a look at just a couple of apps. Backup and restore. Nothing. Calculator. Basic. Calendar. Basic. Clock. Basic. Downloads. Nothing in there. Cool. Email. I'll set up a Gmail on this. I've got a burner one I can use. Does the file manager look any different? No, nope, just the generic one. Sound recorder. Just a little... Yep, that's fine. At the moment, it looks pretty bare bones, pretty stock. But as I said, there's probably viruses or something going on inside of this. Uh, I'll open the phone dialer just quickly. Failed at that one. Maybe I shouldn't dial it so fast. Hey, we got barcodes, man. That's cool. Um, let's go ahead and open up the camera. Why not? Here we go. Camera. And uh, it's just the very basic one. We got beauty mode, HDR, flash, and you can set it to the front camera. That's the one. And let's go into settings. The front camera says 13 megapixels. The video quality will be set to high. Okay. Swapping to the back camera, we will have 24 megapixels. Okay. And the video quality is going to be set to fine. But obviously, there is no secondary camera or anything like that on the back. It is just the one single one. Up the top, we've got live photo mode. That wouldn't be the um, fake blur effect, would it? Could be. Uh, we have panorama. And we got uh, multi-angle view mode. Cool, we'll just stick with the normal mode. As most of you know, I do film at night time, so I can't do the camera test now, but I will do it in the next couple of days and then chuck it in here for you all to have a laugh at. Mm show what the device is capable of photo-wise. Hey, it might not be too bad. Who knows? Prove me wrong, future me. You never know. Testing video recording on the Mate 39 Pro phone thing. Early morning, everything's looking pretty nice. Auto focusing makes everything go dark as per normal. Looks okay from this point of view, to be honest. Yeah, it looks okay. My garden is no more. Everything's gone. Well, most of it, anyways. Everything's nice and bare which is good. And having a look at the details on the brick wall, and you can hear a bit of wind as well. Yeah, it does pick up some details. EIS is currently off at this point in time, but it seems pretty smooth. Just like this anyways, seems pretty smooth. 
Coming down and saying hello to Stuart. Good morning. He's still happy, no matter what day it is. He's always happy. And in these very tough times, Stuart is still keeping a smile on his face. And hope everyone else can too. Just stay positive, people. Going to lemons. Here we go. Now it looks like a lemon. And the water droplets as well. Not too bad. And the air contest as well. This is just normal. And this is a four times digital zoom, which looks very, very blurry and grainy, but that's to be expected, of course. And this is the front camera. It's probably 640 by 480. Nothing special. No autofocus or anything like that. And it's very, very dark, even though it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. But it's very, very dark. No autofocus. No nothing. So there you go. Can I please exit the camera, or you're gonna just, you're not gonna do it, are you? Okay, it's a couple of days later. I've had time to play with the camera, and it's, it's got its ups and downs. First of all, HDR does work. During the photos, when I toggled HDR on, the photo would go extremely light. When I would toggle HDR off, it would go extremely dark. The exposure is just all over the place. It just jumps everywhere. Uh, EIS made the camera app crash. Every time I would start video recording with EIS on, it just crashes. The live photo mode takes a six second video and that's it. That's all it is. So it's just a six second video and that's it. I test it just with my foot out and that's all it does. Once HDR is on, everything just goes completely laggy and just does not want to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, there's no pro mode either. Nothing, it's just very standard. Beauty mode barely works. If you've seen my lovely selfies, it barely did anything to make me look pretty. Silly welcome phone. But it's definitely not a uh, 24 megapixel one, as it says. Is it 24 megapixel that it said? Yeah, 24 megapixel. There you go. No, definitely not that. And the other cameras are just dud ones, of course. But all in all, though, does this welcome phone have good cameras? No, not really. I don't think we've ever had a welcome phone that has good cameras. Maybe the S20 Ultra had probably the best camera, I'd say. Maybe. Well, it's dead now, so I can't tell you. Alrighty. Well, moving on. Let's jump into the YouTube test then. Have a look at my Doogee BL5500 light teardown. Today we are looking at the Doogee BL5500 light that I decided to put the case on upside down for some particular reason. I wanted to keep the teardown separate from the main video, only because I wanted to focus on looking at the dual camera setup inside of this, and as well to see the massive 5500mAh battery inside. Okay, let's bump up the quality to, well, it's a 240p, holy moly, all right, 480p. That's what we can do, all right. With my iCheapo toolkit, I can get out my tools to prepare to tear this phone down. I'll need my screwdriver, some prying tools. Uh, YouTube at 480p works. It doesn't do 720p, which, in settings, the screen resolution said 1200 by 500 or something like that, so usually that means that YouTube auto-detects your screen resolution and matches the quality according to that, which means that this may not even be a 720p display. <laughs> okay, all right, no worries. So during that YouTube test, the speaker was not too bad. Didn't sound half bad, but speaking of speakers, let's test the speaker and see if the speaker is a good speaker. I just want to do a little bit of a test quickly. Alright, that's my test. Okay, starting off with Mick Gordon's Doomed Hunter from Doom Eternal. This is on full ball. See how it sounds. One hundred four point eight so far, but I'll just turn it down quickly. If you notice along the sides, the lighting. So when I was in the middle of my iPhone clone month, which is on hiatus at the moment, I'm very sorry, it's on hiatus. It was driving me insane doing a video every single day. Um, you had the LEDs on the sides of those iPhone clones. Well, this is the 2020 version of it. It's on display. Look at it go. Crazy. All right, let's try Doomed Hunter because it's got a bit of bass in it. So, let's see what this sounds like.
the thumping bass in this song isn't quite present. It is just a cheapy speaker. But to finally finish it off, I'll do BFG Division 2020. I meant to put BFG 10K on here, but I accidentally put BFG Division 2020 on it, but that's okay, that's fine. <laughs> So still 104.8, but look, all in all, the speaker is not the greatest one in the world. It does the job, but it's definitely nothing special as we all expected. So now the next steps we need to do is do a virus test, do some gaming, check the specs, tear it down, call us a video, because I don't want this going on for terribly long. So I will sign into a random Gmail account, get that all started, and then we can go ahead and start digging into this mate. 39. You know they've got Mate 33s as well. They've got Mate 33, Mate 34, Mate 39, Mate 39 Pro. They've got multiple ones and they're all basically the same. Anyways, let me uh, sign into Gmail and we can start. Alright, so I'm trying to download a couple of games and I've got not enough external storage coming up. I will try a couple of other things to see what happens, but Call of Duty is not showing up during searching, so that means that this has probably less than 2 gigs of RAM. I will try and install it another way though, and I'll try a couple of other games and see what happens, but that's a bit strange that it comes up with not enough external storage. Phone storage is default? Nope. Okay. That's a bit strange. Alright, I'll try and install some games from my actual SD card, and the default write storage is definitely the phone. Okay, I've got Call of Duty installed, so let's open it and see what happens. Do we get an Activision logo? Anything? Hey. Come on. You can do it. That's fine, we'll just continue. Well, this happened with the S20 Ultra clone that I had a look at, same thing. So unfortunately, we can't play Call of Duty. What about GTA 3? Hey! Okay, so everything is on high, the frame limiter is off, all good. All right, let's try GTA 3 then. I mean, it's not a very demanding game, but you know. Speaker doesn't sound half bad now. Okay, everything going good. For some reason, I can't skip the cutscene now. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Um... Oh, it's, it's cut off. Okay, maybe it's the edge screen. I've got to turn the edge screen off then. Uh... Oh. It works, but the controls are over here somewhere. In that case, GTA does run fine if you just wanted to just walk around and have a walking simulator. I mean, you can just barely jump, which is good. Um, I'll come into settings and I'll see if I can try anything else. I don't know. Okay, bumping the resolution down to 50%, I still can't skip anything, the controls aren't on the screen or anything, so I don't know what to do. As I said, if you want to walk around in GTA 3, it's uh, fine, it's quite smooth, but other than that, I can't do anything. I can't hide that navigation bar either. That doesn't go down. I look through the settings again, and there's nothing to hide that navigation bar, it's just always going to be there. So, let's try Minecraft as a last ditch effort and see if I can actually try and play a game on this. Just to also prove that Call of Duty doesn't come up here. I installed it through the SD card with the APK and OBB data um, in a folder. That's how I managed to install Call of Duty on here, but through the Play Store, it's not on here. Alright, let that download, and then I'll search for an antivirus as well, by the way. Okay, so Malwarebytes isn't here either. I guess I'll just try Avast. Alright, Minecraft is installed, so let's go ahead and see if this is any different. Okay, so the navigation bar is not stuck, so that's good. Must have been a glitch with GTA 3, who knows, but we'll see what this looks like. Okay, with everything on the default settings, let's go ahead and have a stroll through Minecraft's wonderful terrain and not get stuck on any trees or anything like that. Not so far, looking playable. A couple of lags here and there, jump in the water, try not to drown. Nope, we're all good. Looking into the distance sort of thing, it does get a little bit laggy, but otherwise it does seem to work. You can see that the UI is slightly cut off by the bezels, that's okay. 
look, otherwise Minecraft seems to work, and that seems to be the only game that we might be able to play on this. But it gives you a rough idea of what it's capable of. I think once we check the specs, we'll see what we're in for. Alright, so we've got Avist installed on here, so let's go ahead and run a virus test and see what comes up. I don't know what might come up, actually. I have no idea. Let's just press the big orange button and see what happens. It's found one risk. Let's see if it finds more. Found two, three. These could be false positives, who knows. No, it's the exact same thing that's happened before. Um, okay, we've only got two risks now instead of three. Um, unknown sources and web shield is off. Avis is pretty much useless, to be honest. I'd rather Malwarebytes because that does an in-depth scan. Um, Avis doesn't really do it, but Malwarebytes can't be installed on this for some strange reason. But look, if you've seen through the apps, there was a couple of dodgy looking things in there. But going by the nature of these devices, we don't know what's installed on here by default. We have no idea what could be lingering around inside of the OS it's been toyed around with. Just don't put your personal data on here. It's just not worth it. Even though I can't get Moebytes to run, I would probably say that there would be viruses somewhere in here. That Phoenix one, I believe, is definitely one. But at this point, what can I do? I mean, I could try a couple of other ones, but... I remember trying a bunch on one of the other phones. I was trying AVG, Avis, and everything, try to do a virus scan. Nothing worked. Malwarebytes was the only one that picked up anything. So if anyone knows of anything else, I could try to see if there's any viruses on this. Please let me know down in the comments. That'd be great. Um, otherwise, I think we should move on to the specs, because I really want to see what this thing is running. See if we can get Geekbench 5 on here. Nope. So we're going to be doing Geekbench 4. I think because it's running Lollipop, that's probably the reason why half of these things aren't working. I'll go ahead and just install Geekbench 4 and the other apps, and we'll just see what happens from there. Actually, I'm going to install Antutu as well, because that will tell us what the supposed specs on this would have been, where it would have been listed on eBay or Wish or wherever. Got all the relevant apps installed. Going to start with Geekbench 4. Android Mate 39. Hey, mate. How you doing? Android 10, MTK6799, cluster 1, 6 cores at 0.00 hertz. And then cluster 2, 4 cores at 1.3 gigahertz. That makes complete sense. Uh, battery, 69%, not charging. It's all good, though. We can do a standby test, maybe, but I imagine it's going to be absolute crap. Android Mate 39, Mali 400 MP. Anyone going to suggest an MT6580 in this? Yep, and the resolution is 1440 by 3040. But we'll run the benchmark and see what it comes up with. And I can compare it with the S20 Ultra and some other ones that I've tested as well. Here we go. I've waited long enough. Ooh. 384 single core. Multi core is 1034. Android 10, Mate 39. Memory is 1.93 gig. Just under 2 gig, but Call of Duty should have ran though. Okay. MT6580, I love the cluster. That's the first time I've actually seen two clusters to make it seem like a Decker core, but no, it's just a quad core. I'll splice in some previous scores just here of some previous phones, just to give you a bit of an idea of what's going on. But in that case, let's go ahead and run Antutu and see what that says. It'll probably be the Mate 3rd. Okay, sure. Do that again. All right, no worries. Let's just move straight on then. <laughs> Just don't worry about it. Uh, CPU-Z should probably tell us, actually. MediaSec MTK6799. Yep. Mali 400 MP, though. Mm -hmm. In device, we've got the Mate 39 Android, 6.7 inches, all that sort of stuff, all the things that are on the uh, real deal. 8 gigs of RAM, but available is 4.42. System is Android 10, but the API level is 29. That doesn't make sense. Battery, thermal, sensors. Okay, let's go into the actual app that'll show us what's going on. Android Mate 39, or it's the welcome Android Mate 39. MiniTech MT6580, as we expected. Lollipop as the Android version. Coming into the next tab, MT6580. It does say it has 10 cores, but we know it's a quad core. That's the first time I've ever seen that cluster thing. Uh, total internal memory, 16 gigabytes. Use internal memory, 1.6. Available is 10, so I don't know why it didn't want to work, but there you go. And external memory is my 8 gig micro SD card. We've got 2 gigs of RAM, and available RAM is only 1 gig. And screen is 5.2 inches. Nope, that's not the case. 540 by 1128, which that explains why YouTube couldn't do 720p. So there you go. Battery, let's just see if it has anything. No, 
nothing there. CPU, no. Accelerometer, cameras. The back one is an 8 megapixel one, and the front one is 5 megapixels, which makes sense. Alright, I'll come into Droid Info and see if we can see anything else, but I think I know the specs of this device now. Yep, Lollipop, 540 by 1200 quad core, Mali 400 MP, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, 8 megapixel primary camera, and the 5 megapixel secondary one, and not a lot of features going on. Battery doesn't show the capacity, but we'll see once we tear it down. I think I know what's going on in this device. I don't know why it didn't run Call of Duty from the Play Store. Usually devices that have 2 gigs of RAM will run that. It could be an incompatibility being Android 5.1. That could be the issue. All in all, if you see the Mate 39 device on eBay, DHgate, Joom, Wish, wherever you see it, don't buy it. Because it's not worth it. When you can go buy a Xiaomi device or something from Umidigi or Oppo or something like that that has trusted reviews and it's not going to be a generic piece of crap like this is. While this may look nice on the outside and the fake specs make people go, oh, look at that, it's got all these things. It's not the case at all. It does look nice though. That color is very, very nice. And for what I paid for it, I save someone the hassle of getting this. I buy these devices so you don't have to, so you don't have to have this device, put your own personal details in it, and then for it to all go downhill from there, you don't get 128 gigs of storage, you don't get 8 gigs of RAM, you don't get a DecaCore processor, you don't get anything that's advertised, it's all just lies, 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 and more lies, and unfortunately a lot of people fall for these phones, they see them, they see the specs, they see the price, and it's automatically, oh that's a good, that's a good bargain, because Wish and all that has the recommended retail price crossed out, and instead, oh, it's $120, $130. Yeah, look elsewhere, please. As I said, I buy these devices so you don't have to. With all that being said, this one wasn't actually that great to have a look at. The display still looks good, but with it only being 540 by 1200, that's just a bit of a weird one for me. Uh, games didn't run, the speakers, meh, it's 3G. Basic specs, you know, it's average. And we didn't get to try fingerprint because it just didn't want to work. Everything just keeps crashing on the device. And TikTok was installed by default. So that's a negative. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm pretty much done. So let's go ahead and power this off. And oh boy, that was fun. Bye bye. When I went to cash converters, there was two white boxes. This one and the other one side by side. And the other phone, whoa, that's a cheap one. Can't wait till we get to that one. I've only got one bar of battery left, and um, I can't be bothered getting up and getting my heat gun. So I'm going to just try and pry off the back glass with basically nothing. So to just see how strong the adhesive is. If I break it, I break it. Oh, that was actually quite easy. That's already our point of entry, so I'll just go straight along. This is very easy. See? You don't need heat. Oh, okay. Hopefully I didn't slice through anything important because I haven't done the camera test as usual. Uh, so... It should be fine. Okay. So, there's our back glass panel. Adhesive is pretty weak. Um... Yeah. Does anyone want to have a guess at the battery capacity? Oh, there was. It was just a white sticker underneath here. Remember I said at the start, white sticker? Hey, I was right. What, what's it hiding? Actually, look. Square for a camera there. So, repurposed. Probably the same motherboard out of another device that I've already had a look at, most likely. Come on, what's under here? Be something cool. Come on. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, nothing. Okay. Fair. Okay, uh... I may have damaged stuff. That flex room was attached right to the bottom of the battery. And, well, it just sort of ripped right off. So I'll have to fix that. In terms of battery, though, it is very difficult to see. You are not going to be able to see this at all. But just there is a barcode. Very difficult to see. But under some light, it says 2,420 milliamp hours. That is what it's rated at. But you can see the metal frame underneath here. So it does have some sort of structural integrity to it. It's just a question of how much though. Also, it's, is it missing a screw? Is it just randomly missing a screw? Just, I think it is. 
Okay, so as you've seen before, the PCB for the bottom flex just completely pulled out because I pulled the battery out and it was stuck to it. I've put it back in and it all does work, so that's good. But now it's finally time to actually disassemble it and get down to the guts. I was trying to work out if I wanted to do this in a separate video or not, but I just thought I may as well have it all in one video. The Doogee BL5500 Lite teardown, I wanted to do a Jerry Rig Everything tribute to, uh, whereas this teardown is just going to be a very chilled one, so this is just a bit of a thrown in bonus, I guess. All right, with the SIM tray removed, we have to take out like, uh, I don't know, 15 screws or something? Close, 16. With all the screws being completely removed from the frame, you think that this plastic would just sort of pop off? No. The whole frame just comes right off. Like so. Completely plastic. Not a unibody like it says on many of the listings. So there you go. You can also see the camera bump just there with the real camera. And this is just stuck down into place. Also notice that there's a um, little dud camera there as well. So this may be part of a P30 Pro maybe? because that looks like a P30 Pro area, like a triple camera setup should be there. So maybe this originally was a P30 Pro clone, and they've just repurposed it as a Mate 31, Mate 39. <laughs> well, there you go. So now we've got the insides. So we've got the bottom subboard area. There's the loudspeaker, just flops around like so. We've got some tape covering the LCD and digitized cables just under there. So I'll just put that over there to protect them. We've got the corn style vibration motor, the Type-C USB port, microphone, antenna contacts, Wi-Fi antenna, and the subboard flex, which is nice and secure now. We've got the battery here, as we said, is a 2320, 2420, I don't know. It's been a couple of days, I can't remember now. And then we've got the motherboard itself. There is a sticker just present here, which says a couple of things. Right underneath where that Y is actually says 2 plus 16, just under there which confirms when I was checking the specs, that pretty much matches up with that sticker. But I'll go ahead and take the motherboard off carefully, somewhat, if I can. Also, there's an unused um, connector right there. I would say for a rear-mounted fingerprint scanner, most likely, but just um, goes unused. Interesting. I also want to see the proximity area as well, so we'll go ahead and try and take this off carefully. The rear camera is this little guy here. He has no OIS, but he does have a couple of codes on him, which I will Google and let you all know what that corresponds with. Next up, we've got some tape covering the front earpiece and front camera, so I'll grab this off. And he's literally just a little guy. But I'll take a photo of this and let you know what this camera is. Grabbing out the top earpiece as well. Okay, so during the start of the video when I was actually talking about the front camera area here, I can actually see, you might be able to see too, it's the teardrop notch that's in there, but they've actually made it look like a full-size notch, but it's actually realistically a teardrop. That notch is artificial. The screen does go all the way to about here until it comes to the teardrop notch, which is just there. Yeah, you can clearly see it just there. Well, there you go. The more you know. And just pulling back the motherboard, we can see the metal frame basically is just cut off in random places. It's actually very sharp there. They've just literally cut pieces off the metal frame to accommodate this board to fit in there. But obviously this was from another different device and they've just, yeah, chopped it up. And here we go. But obviously no thermal paste or anything like that. The heat dissipation just goes straight through the LCD. You can actually see some codes on the back of the LCD there. I kind of feel like just taking the LCD off at this point in time, but I don't want to kill it that much. What I will do is take the shielding off. I, I do want to take this shielding off. I'm only going to take this part of the shielding off. That's it. I'll leave the rest on. To confirm, we have the MediaTek MT6580A, as per usual. We have a Samsung flush module just there, which I will Google that code and tell you all what that is during editing. We've also got another chip here, probably a power IC or something like that. That's basically it. There's nothing much to it. While the metal frame's been chopped up to pieces, at least underneath the battery, it looks pretty solid. So this probably would survive a bend test. I don't know if I should commit to that or not. You know what? Let's go ahead and put this back together, see if it works, and then we'll conclude this video. All right, the moment of truth. Does it still work? It still works. Oh, I'm proud. 
couple of codes on the motherboard as well if you wanted to have a bit of a Google. But I noticed there's something called NTC there. There's another unused flex cable connection just there. Uh, another one just there for probably some side keys on this side. So yeah, this is definitely a repurposed motherboard, 100%. I mean, look at the damn thing. It's all just chopped up into pieces and there we go, we've made a phone. Engineering level at 100 right now. I'll tell you that. So now, oh, I'm missing buttons, that's right. Okay, I was actually able to remove this solid piece of aluminium that hides the three dud cameras. So I can just plonk that back on there, like so, and you wouldn't even notice. Okay, so the device is back together and it seems to be working, apart from the fact that it says Android is starting and it's taking a sweet time. So in that case, I'll show you the specs right here. Feel free to pause the video and have a read of these because this is all of the specs that I have found on this device. I think it's all correct. If I'm not correct about anything, let me know down in the comments below as always, but I think that's pretty much on point. But otherwise, this Mate 39 is a heap of garbage. It is not what it says it is, of course. It's one of these welcome devices that are absolute crap and... um. I buy these so you don't have to. Please don't buy the Mate 39 Pro from Wish or eBay or wherever you see it because it's just not worth it. If you want an actual Huawei device, buy an actual Huawei device. If you want something that's like a flagship but costs half the price of a flagship, look at something from Xiaomi or even Oppo, maybe even TCL or Vivo or anything like that. But just don't go with these welcome devices on Wish, please. As I said, it just they're not worth it. Don't trust your data on these. I cannot stop you from buying these devices, but I can just warn everyone and say, trust me, you're not going to enjoy the experience if you buy one of these things and expect it to be any decent. As I said earlier in the video, I can't wait till we get to the next one that I got along with this one, because that's just, uh, that's glorious. That has got a bunch of features which I can't wait to have a look at. And just as a bit of a bonus while I'm watching Durig Everything's TCL 10 Pro Durability Test, while the phone is completely working and is all factory reset, I'm going to go ahead and give it a bend test. Well, the back cracked. The LCD survived, although it's uh, just a little bit bent, but... I can show you all something. I've now proved my point. There it is. The notch is completely a dud. It's just the teardrop notch on the back there. But hey, you know what? It all still works. Uh, you know what? That's fine. And this has been the Welcome Mate 39 Pro video. Do not buy this phone, please. Now it's, uh, well, in better condition that it was before but hey you know what at least it still works man that's that's the main thing all right everyone thank you very much for watching this long ass review i'm very sorry that it's gone on so long again i'm trying to make this video shorter and i can't do it but i will keep trying and persevering but anyways that's it from me thank you very much once again for watching stay safe take care be good people and i'll see you in the next one which will be probably another welcome device i can't believe i was right about that notch Oh boy, it survived perfectly fine, not a problem. Look. Fixed. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.